This case takes place in Australia on the 9th of September 2015. Tara Brown was a 24-year-old woman who lived in Queensland. She was born in Hamilton, New Zealand, but shortly after her birth, her family relocated to the Gold Coast, where they found a new home. Tara was described as a carefree spirit, sweet-natured and kind. She had many friends and was very close with her family. Tara was known to be rather intelligent and athletic. Her talent in touch football took her to representative levels. With a loving family by her side and a supportive circle of friends, her future seemed promising. But in 2011, things began to change. Tara became more distant. Concerned and curious, her friends began to inquire about her whereabouts. And it turned out that Tara had met a new man. His name was Lionel Patea. Tara and Lionel were not strangers. Their paths had crossed years before at a high school where Lionel had gathered recognition as a promising NRL player. Despite their distant friendship during their school days, it was during that fateful weekend in 2011 that they seemed to forge a deeper connection. What followed seemed like a whirlwind of romance, and within just a few months, their relationship escalated at a rapid speed. Just three months into the relationship, Tara confided with her mother Natalie and told her that she was pregnant with Lionel's baby. At just 20 years old, Tara was conflicted about whether or not to keep the baby, but her mother reassured her that she would support her no matter what. Tara decided to keep the child. She was certain that she could raise the baby on her own if she ever needed to, and Lionel had given Tara the promise of a happy family. But this idealistic life Tara had envisioned would come crashing down when Lionel dropped a bombshell. He told her that he had joined the Bandidos. The Bandidos are one of the largest and most notorious outlaw motorcycle clubs in the world. They were established in 1966 in Texas, USA, but have expanded their presence across different countries and are considered to be an international criminal organization. They have chapters in the United States, Canada, Europe, Australia, and more. Over the years, the Bandidos have gained a reputation for involvement in various criminal activities. And after joining this gang, Lionel became more violent and controlling. His ruthlessness helped him rise through the ranks, eventually becoming a sergeant at arms. Lionel became aggressive towards Tara and was incredibly manipulative. He wanted control over Tara's life. He insidiously isolated her from her loved ones, rendering her utterly dependent on him. He treated her like a possession rather than a girlfriend. Lionel dictated what Tara wore, constantly accused her of infidelity, and inflicted unimaginable torment upon her during pregnancy. Allegedly, he strangled her and even pushed her down the stairs. Lionel threatened to hurt their dog and Tara's own family. Despite the immense fear she endured, Tara mustered the courage to report the violence to the police in June of 2012. Around this time, she was 22 weeks pregnant, but the two ended up getting back together. Tara hoped that the birth of their daughter would stop the violence, but Lionel's aggression only intensified. He manipulated her emotions, weaponizing threats of taking his own life, and made numerous threats against her family and friends all to maintain control over her every move. Lionel then gained control over Tara's finances, which made breaking up with him seem like a daunting task. But on the 30th of August 2015, Tara decided to leave Lionel for good. Upon telling him, Lionel lashed out. He pinned Tara down on her bed, holding a pair of scissors to her neck and threatening to take her life. Tara was left crying, and fearing for her life. This torment lasted between 10 and 20 minutes before Lionel's aunt arrived at the home and intervened. Following this, Tara walked into the police station, desperately seeking assistance to escape the clutches of Lionel. With a friend by her side, she presented the officers with a series of chilling text messages, but she was informed by the police that there was little they could do. Despite her cry for help, the police offered no real solution. Instead of extending a helping hand, they directed her elsewhere, leaving Tara to face her nightmare alone. 
Tara continued to avoid Lionel for her and her daughter's safety, as lawyers negotiated a custody agreement between the two. On the 9th of September 2015, Tara dropped her daughter off at school. As she was driving back home, Lionel's Jeep rammed into her car. Terrified, Tara tried to drive away. The two were driving at high speeds when Lionel rammed her car again, but this time sending it hurtling down an embankment and into somebody's front yard. A bystander named Lisa Kennedy rushed to the scene after hearing the crash. She saw Tara trapped beneath the wreckage and quickly came to her aid. The woman then saw Lionel. She believed that he was simply trying to help her from the wreckage, but she was wrong. Tara was conscious, but was completely trapped in the wreckage of her car. The woman watched in horror as Lionel picked up a metal slab from a fire hydrant weighing 8 kilograms from the side of the road. He then began to repeatedly bash Tara in the head. Lisa Kennedy attempted to intervene, but Lionel's strength could not be overpowered. His violent blows rained down upon Tara as he struck her over and over again, leaving her defenseless and crying out for help. Before being rammed off the road, Tara had called triple zero, the non-emergency line. She never hung up the phone. The call continued, and the operator could hear a dozen thumping sounds, as well as Tara crying out, Lionel, please stop. Please help me. In the midst of this disturbing attack, a man passing by in his vehicle stopped to lend his assistance, but Lionel was able to fight him off. As firefighters arrived, Lionel fled from the scene. Emergency responders worked to free Tara from the mangled car, and they were deeply shocked by the injuries she had sustained, as they went far beyond the impact of the crash. With the slab of metal, Lionel had caved Tara's face in, and she was completely unrecognisable. Tara was rushed by ambulance to the Gold Coast University Hospital, where a specialised trauma team awaited her arrival. As the doctors and nurses worked frantically to save Tara from her injuries, Lionel was being sought by the police. He eventually surrendered himself at a police station with self-inflicted knife wounds. He was transported to the hospital where he remained in a stable condition. Lionel was then charged with attempted murder as Tara's friends and family awaited news of her condition. The investigation into the incident found that the car crash was intentional and planned by Lionel. Witnesses had spotted him steering his car in front of Tara's at an intersection, where he got out and began striking her car with his fists, before eventually running her off the road. Tragically, Tara's injuries were too great, and she passed away in the hospital from severe brain trauma. Lionel's charges of attempted murder were formally changed to murder. Tara Brown lived for her young daughter. Her Instagram page has dozens of photos of them in happier times. Then her final post, Carpe Diem, seized the day. Friends say she lived by the saying before her life was cut short trying to flee her high school sweetheart. Lionel Patea, a former bandito sergeant at arms, is accused of ramming her car off the road, then bashing her while she lay trapped in the wreckage. Her life support was turned off. Overnight, she died. She was 24. Today, Patea was charged with murder. Lionel Patea was being treated for self-inflicted stab wounds at the Gold Coast University Hospital, but now has been transferred to the PA in Brisbane due to safety concerns. Senior police from Ethical Standards Command have launched a separate investigation. After revelations, Tara Brown recently sought a domestic violence order but was turned away. There are incidents where sometimes police are not acting fast enough. So let's get that matter investigated. Family members today posted, rest now in heaven, beautiful girl, always and forever in our hearts. In February of 2017, he pleaded guilty to the murder of Tara Brown. It is reported that Lionel sat emotionless as Tara's mother read a victim impact statement. And when speaking about the horrific crime he committed, Lionel said, there are no words that can possibly describe how remorseful I am. Nothing I can say can bring Tara back. Nothing I can do can get her returning home to us. 
If there was, I would do it in a heartbeat. It was then discovered that Lionel was also involved in the presumed murder of 37-year-old Greg Dufty, a man who was in debt over illegal substances. In May of 2018, Lionel confessed to his role in the murder of Greg and was given a second life sentence. Tara's untimely death had a profound and lasting impact on her family and the broader community. Her family was forced to grapple with an overwhelming grief that no parent, sibling or loved one should ever have to endure. Following the death of Tara, vigils and memorial events were held in her honour. The case backed a nationwide conversation about domestic violence and bolstering support for survivors in Australia. A foundation was also set up in her memory. A link to the website can be found in the pinned comments. Domestic violence often starts insidiously, with manipulative tactics and psychological control gradually eroding a victim's self-esteem and independence. In Tara's case, Lionel gradually tightened his grip on her life, isolating her from her support network and exerting complete control over her every move. The process of being entangled in such a destructive dynamic can be distressingly subtle, making it challenging for victims to even recognise the warning signs until it's too late.